بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مذن له ومن يذلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدقل حديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ظلالة وكل ظلالة في النار أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته So inshallah we'll continue from where we left off which is where the Sheikh was mentioning the story with regards to the two individuals who were asked, they were passed by a village, a village, and they were asked by those people of that village to sacrifice something, sacrifice, um, sacrifice their, uh, sacrifice something to their uh, idol that they worshipped in the village. And the Sheikh explains, the hadith, the story, and we got up to the point where the Sheikh had mentioned that one of the two individuals um, had a sacri- had nothing to sacrifice, so they said to him, even if it's a fly, sacrifice it. Even if it's a, a, such a, a small thing as a fly, such a lowly thing as a fly, they said, even that will will be accepted. So the first person, he, this individual, he sacrificed the fly. He died upon that and his conclusion was that he committed shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, died upon that and entered the hellfire because of the shirk he committed. And then the shaykh continues, he says, مِثْلُ مَا يَقَعُ عَلَىٰ أَيْدِي أَسَّحَرَىٰ قَاتْلَهُمُ اللَّهُ أَنَّا يُؤْفَكُونَ عِنْدَمَا يَأْتِيهِمْ آتٍ يَشْتَكِي مِنْ مَرَدٍ أَوْ مُصِيبَةٍ أَوْ مُؤْذَلَةٍ يَأْمُرُونَهُ أَنْ يَذْبَحْ أَنْ يَذْبَحْ وَيَشْتَرِطُونَ عَلَيْهِ أَنْ لَا يَأْكُلَ مِنْهُ وأن, وَأَنْ لَا يُسَمِّي عَلَيْهِ وَأَنْ يَكُونَ فِي الْمَكَانِ الْفُلَانِ قُرْبَةَ إِلَى الْجِنِّ هذا ذبح, هذا ذبح للجن تقربا إلى الجن لا, لا يذكرون اسم الله ويتقربون بها إلى الجن فإذا كان من, من تقرب بذباب لغير الله دخل النار فكيف, يم فكيف بمن تقرب بدجاجة أو تقرب بكبش أو, أو بقرة أو ناقة أو نحو ذلك لا شك أن هذا أعظم الذباب لا يؤبه به وهذه لها مكانة في النفوس ومنزلة في القلوب ولها حذوة عند أصحابها ولهذا كان الضبح من أعظم القرب المالية لأن بهيمة الأنعام لها مكانة عند صاحبها ولها منزلة في, قلب في قلبه فإذا جرى واحدة منها وهي حبيبة إليه ولها مكانة في نفسه وذبحها <تصفيق> هذه قربة مالية, قربة مالية من أعظم القرب المالية فإذا كانت لغير الله فهذا من أعظم الشرك والكفر بالله سبحانه وتعالى So then continuing from last week the Sheikh continues and he says here uh, he gives the example of, uh, of the likes of uh, at the hands of the magicians for example uh, and he says uh, may Allah destroy them um, because of the lies, the deceit and the delusions that they come with to the people as well. <clears throat> so he says when um, when people come to them, when a person comes to them complaining of an illness or a calamity or the likes of that, what do they say to that person? They say um, they command that person first of all, to sacrifice. They, they command them to sacrifice. So they place conditions uh, upon this person with regards to this sacrifice. They say, don't eat from it. They say, don't 
say Bismillah, don't say Bismillah over it, don't say the name of Allah over it. And that they should place this thing, wherever it is, uh, that they've sacrificed in a specific place and it's usually close to where the jinns live. And the Sheikh says this is a sacrifice for the jinn, to the jinn, to seek nearness to the jinn. They don't say the name of Allah upon the sacrifice and they seek nearness by way of this sacrifice to the jinn. So the Sheikh says, so if it, so, so he says, so if a person who, in the story with regards to the fly, sacrificing that fly, then if a fly, uh, sacrificing other than, uh, uh, a fly to other than Allah can lead you to the hell, such a small thing like that, sacrificing a fly that nobody cares about, can land you in the hellfire because of the major shit you've committed, then what about seeking nearness? Uh, to other than Allah by way of a chicken, something greater, by way of a sheep, by way of a cow, by way of a camel, and the likes of those examples that are greater than the fly itself. He says no doubt that this is a great thing. He says that the fly, no one cares about that really. You know, it's something that you know, no one really cares about. Right? Something small as a fly. We only really talk about, as the Sheikh mentioned we, in the last lesson, we only, only ever talk about fly if it's annoying you or a, or a, or a bunch of flies are annoying you and, uh, you know, getting in your way, you know. Otherwise, you never mention them. No, it's never a talking point otherwise. So then the Sheikh, he goes on to say, and he says that, why? Because these, he says like a chicken, a sheep, something bigger. It has a place, in, you know, in, 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 with, with the people. It has a place. It has a level with the people. You know, uh, in their hearts, uh, and 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 especially the people like the farmers or whoever who, who who own these animals, for example, the ones who own, whether they be farmers or others, other than them who own these animals. And the sheikh says that's why when uh, uh, that's why he says that uh, from the um, greatest types of worship, which is related to your wealth, is this: you buy or you own. Uh, um, uh, you know, livestock or, or an animal and he sacrifice it and, and it costs a lot of money, it's not cheap from cattle and livestock and that he says that in the people who own these, they, uh, these this livestock, these animals they have a great place with them and a great station with them because they, obviously they look after them, they take time with them you know, there's a lot of work involved you know, uh, and you know they have that look for uh, for that as well for what they've done and the animals they have, you know um, and then the Sheikh, he says, in regards to uh, sacrificing then, he says that that's why this ibadah, this worship of sacrificing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's, it's, it's a great thing. It's a great thing and it's from the greatest types of worship related to wealth. So the Sheikh says, so if it was for other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then it's, it's from the greatest types of shirk and kufr. With uh, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala So this is what the Shaykh has said in this paragraph that we just read So we continue The Shaykh he uh, mentions the original The hadith that we've been reading from la From the last lesson which continues So He says here Qalu lil akhir Qarrib Qala lam akun li uqarrib li ahadin ghayr Allah أعلن توحيد أعلن توحيده وإخلاصه مثلما جاء في الآية قل إن صلاتي ونسكي ومحياي ومماتي لله رب العالمين سدع بتوحيده. So just before I continue, we'll just mention the starting of this this paragraph. Then we continue that story of the hadith about the two flies, uh, about the two people and the and the flies that they were told. Or, uh, com commanded to or told to sacrifice even if it was a fly for for their idol when they were passing this village and you couldn't pass it except that you sacrificed something or brought forth something and sacrificed for this idol of theirs so we move on to the second person now so the first person had fallen into shirk by uh, sacrificing a fly the second person now we're talking about the second person so they said to the second person they said to him, the second individual, bring something forth, sacrifice something. And he replied to them, he said, I cannot, I cannot sacrifice anything 
to other than Allah. So he came out and clarified his tawheed straight away. He clarified his tawheed and his sincerity and that he's not going to sacrifice anything to other than Allah. I.e. that he only sacrifices to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the, and the Shaykh brings the uh, ayah again that we mentioned in the last couple of lessons that we're all familiar with. قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِ وَنُسُكِ وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَا So the Shaykh says, he says here, سَدَعَ بِتَوْحِيدِهِ وَإِخْلَاسِهِ وَهَذَا يَدُلُّ عَلَى قُوَّةِ التَّوْحِيدِ فِي قَلْبِهِ وَمَكَانَتِهِ فِي نَفْسِهِ أَمَامَ هَأُولَاءِ الْعُطَاتِ الْجَلَاوِذَةِ الْمُجْرِمِينَ إزهاقي روحه لم يبالي قال لم أكن لأقرب لأحد غير الله وهذا فيه إذا من مكانة التوحيد في قلب هذا الرجل فأمسكوا به وذبحوه فدخل الجنة دخل الجنة على عناية إلى على عناية ورعاية عظيمة بالتوحيد أهم ولم يبال ولم يبال بإراقة دمه في سبيل بقائه على التوحيد والإخلاص لله سبحانه وتعالى. So then the Sheikh he says here that the second person he said no he said I'm not going to sacrifice to your idol basically I'm not going to sacrifice anything even if it's a fly I'm not going to sacrifice anything and so this is uh, uh, this is his توحيد apparently being shown and clearly being manifested in what he said. And the Shaykh says, this is his Tawheed that we're seeing. And we're seeing his ikhlas, his sincerity for Allah Jalla wa'ala only. And from his speech, we see that what's in his heart and that in his within himself, in front of these people, the, 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 the station and the greatness of Tawheed, that, you know, what he sees as Tawheed, that he sees that greatness, it's it's a big thing, you know, and he understands shirk as well, and the gravity of it, uh, in front of these criminals, and these uh, zalimun, these oppressors, that are oppressing him, and with these oppressors, and these criminals, who are trying to make him, sacrifice to other than Allah, they, they've got, they're holding their swords, and you know, you know, they're threatening him, and you know, the, the likes of this, but that doesn't, uh, sway him anyway you know it it doesn't shake him and he's firm and he says to them i'm not going to sacrifice to anything i'm not going to sacrifice to your your idol basically only sacrifice to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sheikh says in this is uh, the greatness and the greatness with him in terms of the, the tawheed the greatness that station that tawheed is with him in his heart in this man, you know, in the heart of this man. So basically, in the end, when he says that, they, 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 they get, they get a hold of him, they uh, kill him, they sacrifice him, they kill him, uh, 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 and and he, by way of that, he enters the he enters paradise, he enters paradise upon this upon giving tawheed uh, great care and staying firm. Uh, upon his tawheed, tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with that he doesn't care about his blood being spilt and he stays firm and with that him remaining upon his tawheed and upon sincerity for, for Allah alone subhanahu wa ta'ala enters him into the uh, into, into, into paradise so then the shaykh he continues he says well awal walladhi dakhal an-nar بسبب الذباب لا تخلو حاله من أمرين إما أن يكون مكرها على الفعل أو ليس مكرها أو مكرها عليه. So then the Sheikh says, going back to this first, the first person. So obviously we finished talking about the second person. The first person we talked about in the previous lesson. So we go back to the first person, the person who actually did sacrifice the fly, wherever he found it, the fly, and ended up in the hellfire. Then the Sheikh says, let's have a, let's analyze that a bit more and have a look at the possibilities here. He says he entered the hellfire and he says that his affair it doesn't it isn't except perhaps these uh, these two points. 
He says, either he was under duress and forced upon doing that, or he wasn't under duress and he did it wolf, uh, you know, willfully by himself. So the Sheikh wasn't explained. He says, وَإِذَا قِيلَ أَنَّهُ لَيْسَ مُكْرَهًا عَلَى الْفِرْ وَلَعَلَى هَذَا الْأَقْرَبُ وَاللَّهُ تَعَالَى عَالَمْ لِأَنَّ ظَاهِرَ سِيَاقِ الْقِسَّةِ وَهِيَ لَا يَجُوزُ أَحَدْ أو لا, لا يجوز أحد يفيد أن ذلك إنما يكون في مجاوزة السنم لكن من وصل إليهم ولم يرد أن يتقرب له أن يرجع لكن لا يجوز أحد إلا أن يتقرب فيمكن أن يرجع ولا يتقرب إلى ذلك السنم لكن هذا أراد أن يمضي في طريقه ولو حصل منه هذا الذبح لغير الله سبحانه وتعالى فرغب في المواصلة وأن يجاوز المكان فقرب ومضى ومات فكان من أهل النار وأيضا ظاهر, وأيضا ظاهر كلامه من بداية من بداية الأمر يدل على ذلك لهذا قال له قرب قال ما عندي ما أقرب كأنه يقول أنا مستعد لكن ليس عندي شيء أقربه فلم, فلم يحصل منه أي ممانعة ولا تردد ولا امتناع وإنما مباشرة قال ما عندي ما أقرب فقالوا ولو ذباب فذبح ذبابا هذا يدل على يدل يدل على ضعف توحيد عنده ولهذا هذا يدل على ضعف التوحيد عنده ولهذا دخل في الشرك بتقريب بتقريبه لذباب لغير الله سبحانه وتعالى فإذا قيل إنه ليس مكرم فلا إشكال في قوله فدخل النار لأنه تقرب لغير الله ودخل النار بسبب ذلك. So then the Sheikh explains this a bit further just to give us a bit more insight in the potential possibilities of what may have happened uh, to ponder over this. The Sheikh says either two things. So he goes, he, he goes on to say, so if it said that he wasn't under DRS with regards to sacrificing this fly to this idol, uh, so then in that situation, and the Sheikh says, uh, and we hope that the, the, this is the, the more correct understanding of this, because from the uh, from the context of, of the story, um, nobody can pass this place. Nobody can pass this place except by um, sacrificing to, the, to, to, to this idol. He says, however, whoever arrived to them and did not want to, uh, for example, did not want to um, sacrifice, he could return from where he came from. Not go past the village, but go back and return from where he came from. He says, however, um, it wasn't, it's not permissible for a person except that they, uh, except that they sacrifice. So it's possible, he says, that, that one could return and not um, uh, sacrifice to that idol. However, the Sheikh says, however, uh, he says, Hada arada an yamdi fi tariq. So this person, that particular person who ended up in hellfire because of sacrificing the fly, he, uh, he wanted to remain in his path and continue upon his path. So he uh, sacrificed the fly. And he, he wanted to continue on his path, going through and p passing through this that place. So he obviously sacrificed um, uh, that fly to this idol so he can continue on his path. Uh, and, and when he died, died upon shirk and ended up the hellfire. The sheikh says also what's apparent from, from the speech as well uh, uh, in the beginning of this affair or this issue. Uh, he says that that he was to, he said that he was that he was commanded sacrifice. And he replied I don't have anything to sacrifice. L like as if he's saying, I'm ready to sacrifice, but I don't have anything to actually sacrifice with me. That, so from that angle. So so from that, he doesn't obtain... Uh, uh, so from that, what we see from that speech then, from this angle is that there isn't anything that's, you know, that there, there isn't anything from him that's stopped, you know, like that shows that he doesn't want to do it or that he's... Um, 
uh, caught in two minds uh, because he might fear this for his life or whatever. There's none of that there based on the speech. And straight away, just right off, off the bat, he says, I don't have anything to sacrifice. And then they say to him, uh, what about a fly? Even a fly. And so he, he sacrifices a fly. So in that situation, that shows his weakness, his we, uh, the weakness of his tawheed with him. And this is the reason why he he uh, he, he entered into uh, the major shirk uh, by uh, sacrificing of this fly to other than Allah subhanahu wa taala, i.e., the idol. Uh, and this is the reason why he ended up in in the hellfire. And that from this we can see that uh, that indeed he's, he's not uh, under DRS. And so from this point of view of him entering the hellfire, that then there's no issue with it really uh, when we look at it in more detail. And that because obviously he sacrificed to the Allah and he committed the greater shirk which uh, takes him out of the fall of Islam, died upon that and then ended up in the hellfire. So then the shaykh continues, he says, وَإِذَا قِيلَ إِنَّهُ مُكْرَةً عَلَى ذَلِكَ فَعِيدًا لَا إِشْكَالَ فِيهِ لِأَنَّ قَوْلَ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانُهُ وَتَعَالَى إِلَّا مَنْ أُكْرِهَا وَقَلْبُهُ مُتْمَئِنٌ بِالْإِيمَانِ هَذَا خاص هَذَا خَاصٌ بِأُمَّةِ مُحَمَّدٍ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامِ تُجَاوِزُ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانُهُ وَتَعَالَى عَنْ أُمَّةِ مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ الْإِكْرَاحِ والأمم التي كان قبلها كان لا يتجاوز عن عن الإكراه بل يجب أن يصبر ويسمد على التوحيد لا يقول لا يقول كفر ولا يطاوع ولا يطا ولا يطاوعهم في شيء ولو أريق دم دمه ولو أريق دمه وهذا يدل عليه دلائل منها قول النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام إن تجاوز عن أمتي الخطأ والنسيان ومستقره عليه ويجد طالب العلم في هذا بحثا مفيدا وتحقيقا نافعا في أدواء البيان للإمام الشنقيتي رحمه الله تعالى عند قوله إنهم إن يظهروا عليكم يرجموكم أو يعيدوكم في ملتهم ولن تفلحوا إلى أبدا مع أنه فيه رجم هذا النوع من الإكراه قال ولن تفلحوا إذا أبدا فذكر رحمه الله تعالى تحقيقا نافعا وذكر جملة من الأدلة وأيضا ذكر هذا الحديث حديث الذباب وأن الإكراه لم يتجاوز فيه عمن كان قبلنا وإنما هو حكم خاص بأمة محمد عليه الصلاة والسلام So then in this um, uh, paragraph the shaykh says and if it was uh, and if it indeed was under DRS if the person was made to be under DRS then then there's no issue within uh, within that either why because of the speech of Allah that we just read that's from Surah An-Nahl with the um, meaning of that that if the person's under DRS made to do something but their heart is filled with Iman then there's no haraj there's there's no issue upon them because they were forced to do something, but in their heart they're upon iman, yeah, and they were forced to do it, and because of out of duress they did the action, but their heart was full of iman. And the sheikh says that this is this 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 ruling is specific to the uh, the nation of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the ummah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and that Allah allowed. This for, uh, uh, for, for, for the Ummah of uh, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, i.e. al-ikrah, being on the TRS, then you're able to, uh, if you're not able to otherwise uh, stay patient upon it, you're allowed as long as you don't believe that in your heart. If somebody's trying to make you commit shirk or whatever it may be. And the shaykh says that the previous nations before the nation of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, all the other previous nations, and it wasn't uh, permissible and allowed for them to to do this. It was spe- it's only specific for our ummah. Um, rather, it was obligatory for all the previous nations to be patient and be firm upon tawheed in these affairs. And they weren't allowed to say any kufr, and they weren't allowed to obey uh, uh, anyone 
or obey those people in committing sins or anything like this. Uh, and even if their blood will be spilt, if they, uh, uh, if 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 they, you know, even if that case, if the blood was going to be spilt, then that's how it was for them. And the Sheikh says this uh, demonstrates and shows us uh, that the, uh, the in regards to the speech of the Prophet with the Hadith, in Allah to Jawaz an Ummati al Khata wa Nisyan wa Ustakrahu Ali. So that that you know for for the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, regards the meaning of the Hadith, um, general meaning that you know for for the Ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, then you know you know being forgetfulness or making a a, a genuine mistake uh, uh, and the likes of that, then that that was allowed and permissible. It was allowed, you know that that you you wouldn't be um, taken into account if that was truly the case. And so then the Sheikh says. That the student of knowledge, the seeker of knowledge, and the student of knowledge uh, can find um, uh, uh, a, a piece of research or uh, a discussion, a, a discussion with regards to uh, a beneficial discussion in regards to what we're talking about uh, right now. What the Sheikh is explaining to us in a book called Adwa ul Bayan. Yeah, uh, Adwa ul Bayan uh, by uh, uh, a Sheikh and the Imam Ashinqiti Rahmahullah. Ta'ala, where the Sheikh uh, mentions uh, with regards to him uh, doing the tafsir or explaining the ayah that we also read from Surah Al-Kahf in alaykum yarjumukum aw yu'idukum fi millatihim walan tuflihu idhan abada and the meaning of the ayah if we, if we look at the, the the meaning in the English language then if we go to Surah Al-Kahf verse 20 for if they come to know of you, they will stone you to death or abuse and harm you or turn you back to their religion. And in that case, you will never be successful. So the Sheikh says that if you look at this ayah and, and in, in, and within the context of the ayah is that, you know, they would stone you, that they, you know, so it's a, it's a punishment that they'll stone you, they'll punish, try to punish you. And that, that there's a, there's a, there's a, um, it's a type of, being under the arrest then if that they would try to threaten you with stoning or whatever maybe and then the sheikh mentioned that you'll never be successful so then the sheikh says that al-imam uh, al-shinqiti uh, rahmahullah mentions here he says Allah ta'ala tahqiq al-nafi wa dhakra jumlatun min al-adilla wa idhan dhakra hadha al-hadith hadith al-zubab wa anna al-ikrah lam yutajawaz fihi amman kana qabla wa inna ma huwa so, so then uh, uh, th this particular uh, part of the book of uh, 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 the work of Al Imam Shinkiti in uh, the book called Adwal Bayan, not sure what it's called in English, well, I'm sure there's an English version of it. Um, uh, then he talks about the permissibility of uh, saying something that may be uh, a kufr under the arrest, but your heart, as a Muslim, your heart, in your heart, you don't believe that and your 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 uh, heart is filled with iman, and that he, all, he also explains in that book, uh, in his work, that uh, that permissibility of uh, our ummah, that we Allah allowed us to do this, uh, but for the previous nations they weren't allowed, and they had to be patient upon the situation that they were in, or the calamity that they may have faced. So then the Sheikh continues. He says, "Wala kullin." فَهَذَا الَّذِي دَخَلَ النَّارِ فِي ذُبَابِ حَالُهُ لَا تَخِلْ مِنْ أَمْرٍ إِنْ كَانَ غَيْرُ مُكْرَهُ وَهَذَا قَدْ يُسْتَفَادُ مِنَ السِّيَاقِ فَالْحُكْمُ وَاضِحٌ وَلَا إِشْكَالٌ وَإِنْ كَانَ مُكْرَهُ فَيُقَالُ إِنَّ لَفُو بِالْإِكْرَاهِ إِنَّمَا هُوَ خَاصٌ بِأُمَّةِ مُحَمَّدٍ لَيْسَ لَهُ وَسَلَامٌ كَمَا يَدُلُّ لِذَلِكَ دَلَائِلَ الْجَدِيدَةِ وَشَوَائِدَ الْجَدِيدَةِ فِي الْكِتَابِ وَالسُّنَّةِ وَقَدْ بَيَّنَ الشَّيْخُ الشِّنْقِيْتِ رَحْمَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى صَدَّ الشَّيْخُ just summarizes up what we read in that paragraph, so I won't really translate that because uh, it will just be repeating. So, um, we'll continue to the next paragraph. The Sheikh he goes on to say, من جهة الاستعانة ومن جهة التقرب والقصد والنية فهو يكون من جهتين كما أن الإخلاص في الضبح 
يجب أن يكون من جهة الاستعانة وكذلك من جهة القصد والتقرب. So then the Sheikh uh, brings uh, our attention to the following uh, points here. He says, and with, in regards to uh, shirk, then or the type of shirk it is, or uh, uh, from one aspect, he says, the author, uh, uh, Sheikh uh, Sheikh Islam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab mentions, rahmahullah, uh, mentions that, and from it is sacrificing as we when we we began this lesson a uh, uh, couple of weeks ago uh, and from it is or uh, two to three weeks ago and from it is sacrificing i and from shirk is sacrificing to other than allah and he mentions this and the sheikh says uh, that shirk in in terms of sacrificing to other than allah then it's from two angles or two perspectives it is from the the first perspective is seeking aid and the other perspective, excuse me, the other perspective is seeking nearness or, or some kind of goal or nearness to something, an intention. And so he says it's from two angles, uh, um, like ikhlas, i sincerity in your in your sacrifice is obligatory, and that and 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 from that is a perspective of seeking aid, and 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 with that as well. Is from the angle of uh, intention or purpose, or seeking nearness to something. So the Sheikh he says. So from the first point, from the first perspective, he says, "Well, jihatul ula, well, jihatul ula, jihatul istiana, bi dikr ism Allah Jalla wa Ala ala the bihati in the zabhiha mustain bi Allah Subhanahu wa Taala ala dalika fa ida zukira ala the bihati ghair ism Allah Jalla wa Ala kana dalika shirkan fi istiana." وَقَدْ قَالَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى وَلَا تَأْكُلُوا مِمَّا لَمْ يَذْكُرَ اسْمُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ إِذَا تَعَمَّدَ الْإِنسَانُ أَنْ لَا يَذْكُرْ أَنْ لَا يَذْكُرَ اسْمُ اللَّهِ اسْمُ اللَّهِ عَلَى الذَّبِيحَةِ أَوْ ذِكْرَ أَوْ ذَكَرَ عَلَيْهِ اسْمَ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ فَلَا تَحِلَّ فَلَا تَحِلُّ مَهْمَا كَانَ الْغَيْرُ لَوْ قَالَ بِاسْمِ الْمَسِيحِ أَوْ قَالَ بِاسْمِ الْحُسَيْنِ أو قال بسم زينب أو قال بسم الجيلان أو غير ذلك إذا ذكر عليها اسم غي اسم غير الله لا تحل ولا يجوز أكلها ولا تأكل مما لم يذكر اسم الله عليه فهذه جهة جهة الاستعانة بذكر اسم الله على الذبيحة تيمنا بذكر اسمه وتبركا وطلبا لعونه سبحانه وتعالى so let's just stop there for a second because it's a long paragraph. So the Sheikh says, so from the first angle of seeking aid, he says, is uh, pronouncing uh, the name of Allah, right? Pronouncing the name of Allah upon the sacrifice. When you, you know, when you sacrifice, say Bismillah uh, during your sacrifice, seeking aid with Allah upon what you're doing, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, if, if, other than Allah's name is mentioned upon it, then clearly this is major shirk. This is what the shaykh is saying. It's shirk in particular to seeking aid. Shirk, as he says, shirk alastiyana, filistiyana. Seeking aid, but you're seeking aid with other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is not allowed. And then he brings an ayah from the Quran, from Surah Al-An'am, verse 121, where Allah says, don't eat from that which Allah's name has not been said. I.e. Bismillah has not been said upon it. Don't eat from anything that Allah's name has not been pronounced over. Has not been said. He hasn't said Bismillah over it. He hasn't, somebody hasn't said Bismillah over it. So the Sheikh says, if a person deliberately did, did not, deliberately does not, intentionally does not, uh, pronounce the name of Allah upon the sacrifice and he pronounces the name of other than Allah then this is haram it doesn't matter whose name he pronounces if it isn't Allah's name that's it it's haram you can't eat from it even if he even if he says in the name of uh, Christ or he says in the name of Hussein or he says in the name of Zainab or he says or he said in the name of Jilani or, or other than that, from what people do, if he, if 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 other than Allah's name is mentioned upon, 
this sacrifice is me or whatever it is, then it's not allowed. And then the Shaykh repeats the ayah uh, that we read that uh, if where Allah said in Surah Al Anam, verse 121, don't eat from that which Allah's name has not been pronounced or said over here. And the Shaykh continues and he says, Fahadi so Jiha, he says, So this is a perspective, this is one angle of looking at it. He says it's the angle of seeking aid. Seeking aid by pronouncing the name of Allah over the animal that he's sacrificing. Seeking his blessings and seeking his aid and help and assistance. So the Shaykh says, وَإِنَّمَا يُضْجِعُ الْإِنسَادُ ذَبِيحَةَ عَلَىٰ جَنْبِهَا وَيَدَوَ السِّكِّينَ عَلَىٰ رَقْبَتِهَا أَوْ نَحْرِهَا وَيَقُولُ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ يَقُولُ ذَلِكَ تَبَرُّكًا بِذِكْرِ اسْمِهِ وَطَلَبًا لِعَوْنِهِ سُبْحَانَهُمْ وَمُدَّهُ وَمَدَّهُ وَالْبَاءُ فِي بِسْمِ اللَّهِ بَاءُ الْإِسْتِيَانَةَ فَمَعْنَى قَوْلِهِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ إِنْ ذَبْحَ أَيْ بِسْمِهِ أَذْبَحُ ذَبِيحَتِي وَأُقَدِّمُ نَسِيكَتِي بِسْمِهِ مُسْتَعِينًا بِهِ مُتَبَرِّكًا بِذِكْرِ اسْمِهِ جَلَّ وَعَلَى فَإِذَا جُعِلَ هذا النوع هذا النوع من الإبادة وهو إبادة وهو إبادة الاستعانة لغيره يدعو سكينا على نحر الذبيحة ورقبتها ويقول باسم فلان أو علان هذا من أعظم وهذا من أعظم الشرك فهو وهو شرك من جهة الاستعانة. So then the Sheikh he goes on to explain that um, uh, he says that this is from a perspective. So he explains that saying Bismillah over your sacrifice and what you're bring, uh, bring forth for, for, the, uh, to, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you say his name over it. What does it mean? He says, you know, you, you put the animal on its side, you put the knife to the neck and you're ready to, uh, you, uh, you, know, uh, you know, slaughter the animal and you say the name of Allah, you say Bismillah. And he says, what does Bismillah mean? And he breaks this down. This is good to know because not everybody knows this proper meaning of Bismillah. I think we did in different in another book, but anyway, it's good for revision. So uh, the Sheikh says, he says, you say Bismillah. Why? Because you are see you are seeking the aid uh, of Allah, the help of Allah, and the blessings of Allah by saying Bismillah. And this ba, the b b in Bismillah, this ba is, is well known as the ba of Alistiana, the ba of seeking aid. Bismillah. And in Arabic language, uh, in the grammar, when it's explained, you, you understand it uh, as that when it's broken down. And the Sheikh mentions it here, so I'll do my best in translating it. So he says, for example, um, when you say Bismillah and then you sacrifice, you are, you are seeking the aid of Allah by way of that. You're saying, I am sacrificing, if, if it's a sacrifice, you're saying, I am sacrificing, yeah? Uh, uh, and seeking your blessings and your aid and your assistance in what I'm doing. That's essentially what you're doing when you say Bismillah. If you're going to read the Quran and before you read the Quran, you say Bismillah, then you're saying, you're seeking Allah's help. You're saying by His name, by Allah. You're saying, I am seeking your 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 aid. I'm seeking your assistance and your blessings in reading this Quran. So you, you're, whatever you do when you say Bismillah, I'm eating, when you say, before you eat, this is what it means when you break it down. So Bismillah has this meaning. So you're going to say, you're seeking blessings then when you're eating the food. Oh Allah, seek your assistance and blessings in eating this food that, you know, and, 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 and put blessings within it. You know, this is what you're saying, depending on what you're doing. This is what the Shaykh mentions here uh, with regards to the meaning of Bismillah. Then we go on to the second meaning. He says, and from the second perspective then, he says it's from the perspective of seeking nearness and, and the intention uh, of what you're doing. So he says, well, qast بأن بأن يقصد بذبحه للذبيحة غير الله بذبحها مثلما مر للجن أو للقبر أو لشجر لشجر أو لحجر أو غير ذلك هذا شرك من جهة التقرب والتعبد قد مر معنا أن التقرب بالذبيحة لا يكون لا يكون إلا لله قل إن صلاة ونسك ومحيايا ومامات لله رب العالمين أي لا أتقرب به إلا إليه وكذلك قوله فصل لربك وانحر في الحديث الذي مر لعن الله من ذبح لغير الله أي متقربا به لغير سبحانه وتعالى. So then the Sheikh goes on to say so from the second perspective is from the intention and your purpose. 
of seeking nearness. And so if somebody from their purpose and seeking nearness to other than Allah, as mentioned in the previous examples that we've been reading last week and today, then it's, for example, to, to a jinn, for example, or to a grave or to such and such person. Then this is also shirk. And the shaykh goes on to say, with regards to the evidence for this, then it's the ayah that's been repeat, oft repeated here. قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِ وَنُسُكِ وَمَحْيَاءِ وَمَمَاتِ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ So refer to that uh, yourselves. We, we mentioned it a lot of times now. So I won't translate it now. Um, but as the shaykh mentions here, so this is shirk as well from this angle. That if somebody is doing it for other than Allah, whether it's a stone, a tree, an idol, um, or whatever it might be, uh, a jinn or whatever, then they're seeking by way of they're seeking nearness and uh, by way of sacrifice, and that's also shirk, major shirk, which takes you out of the fold of Islam. And the Shaykh also mentions the other ayah that I mentioned the uh, previous couple uh, weeks as well. Fasalli li rabbika wanhar, Surah Al Kawthar. Yeah, Fasalli li rabbika wanhar, and pray to your Lord and sacrifice to Him. Yeah, and that clearly shows that. That's only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Obviously all acts of worship are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only. And this is Tawheed. And that you don't share any of your worship uh, with other than Allah. And that is purely for him. Ikhlas. And that it's in accordance with the sunnah, the authentic sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then the Shaykh also mentions briefly the pre- uh, previous hadith that we also, that the Shaykh mentioned. Uh, Allah man rabaha li ghayri Allah. That Allah curses Allah curses the one, or Allah's curse is upon the one who uh, sacrifices to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So then the Shaykh continues, says, فَإِذَنْ الْإِخْلَاسِ لِلَّهِ فِي الظَّبْحِ يَكُونُ مِنْ جَهَتَيْنِ مِنْ جَهَةِ الْإِسْتِعَانَةِ وَمِنْ جَهَةِ الْإِبَادَةِ الْإِبَادَةِ وَقَسْتِ التَّقَرُّبِ فَالذَّبِيحَةُ تَكُونُ بِاللَّهِ وَلِلَّهِ بِاللَّهِ مُسْتَعِينٌ وَلِلَّهِ مُتَقَرِّبًا وَإِذَا كَانَ جَهَةُ الْإِخْلَاصِ فِي الذَّبِيحَةِ مِنْ جَهَتَيْنِ بِاللَّهِ أَيْ مُسْتَعِينٌ وَلِلَّهِ مُتَقَرِّبًا فَإِنَّ شِرْكَ فِي هَذَا الْبَابِ يَكُونُ عَلَى ثَلَاثَةِ أَحْوَالٍ So then the Shaykh summarizes what, we, what, what is explained to us and he says so therefore uh, then uh, the sincerity is to Allah all of you our sincerity is, is for Allah is for Allah and is to Allah in terms of sacrificing in this example and we look at it from two angles from the angle of seeking aid and assistance and help and blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also from the second perspective as the Shaykh mentioned to us uh, from the perspective of uh, worship and intention and seeking nearness uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, by way of uh, presenting forth the sacrifice uh, uh, and seeking aid um, sorry uh, worshipping Allah and seeking nearness um, uh, 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 in this way when we present the sacrifice to Allah uh, and seeking his aid as well. And the Shaykh mentions this to us here, and then he goes on to say, then he says that in terms of uh, sacrifice, he says that indeed shirk then, in regards to this uh, issue, he says shirk, it has uh, it has uh, its own topic in terms of this, he says, and it's upon three conditions. So he's going to explain the shirk in more detail with regards to what he's mentioned here. And inshallah, uh, we'll, we'll continue that uh, next week. Uh, and there's three points that he will explain. So we'll go through that and more inshallah next week around the same time. Barakallahu feekum. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha ila anta wa astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.